Hello friends, this is Dan Eubanks from Special Consensus and welcome to the uh, IBMA base workshop. Um, of course, this is uh, a little different than we might normally do it. So what I've done is ahead of time, I asked for some input from some of you um, on what you might like me to take a look at. So I'm gonna go in um, with that kind of an idea. So I'm gonna try to get as much in as I possibly can. So hold on to your hats. Uh, so, I like to use um, a simple bluegrass tune to use as a launching pad. Um, and I like to, a lot of times, use Your Love is Like a Flower. Most people will know that, a Flat and Scruggs number. Um, I'm going to play an A for this uh, example. It's usually in B, but A is a little easier for, for a lot of people to deal with, depending on, on how comfortable they are with, with, their, uh, with their instrument and their knowledge of, of notes. So... First thing is to understand the scale that the melody of the song you're coming from, that you're playing is coming from. So we're gonna look at the A major scale, all right? So I'm using one, two, and then putting all of them down for four. These two are together. That's the Samandal bass method that I learned from. Other people do different things, but that's how I do it. So. Um, I might change it up here and there as well myself, depending on what I'm doing. But that's what I'm generally doing, all right? So A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B, A. Now I like to go down below the octave so I get the notes lower because I'm going to use those two. A, G sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. It's not a bad idea to sing them as you play them. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Just to kind of help your, your ears and your intonation kind of sync up a little bit. All right, practicing that with the, uh, with the metronome is a good idea. Um, hang on. Speaking of metronomes. I'm gonna let my phone catch up with me. But we are gonna use a metronome some because I did get some questions about that. Um, so um, they tell me your love is like a flower. So we're gonna do a very simplistic bass line and I'm gonna set the metronome to about 97. I'm gonna play on the downbeats, the metronome's going to be on the offbeats. So I want to sort of um, have that mandolin chop going um, in between the bass notes. So I keep my bass notes kind of short so I have room for that chop which is being um, represented by the metronome. Oh, they tell me your love's like a flower In the springtime blossom so fair In the fall when you And they tell me that's the way of your love Here's a walk up. So the one chord, the four chord, one chord, five chord. I'm using just to, to make sure we're all on the same page. Now we're gonna jump off of this because I had a lot of people ask me how to get away from always doing one, five, one or whatever. So we're going to use this as a jumping off point, as I said. So I'm, when I have a two bar change, I'm playing one, five, one, one. And then I go to the four chord and it's one is, the one of the four chord is D and it's five is A. Five, one, one. So I continue that pattern every time I have a two bar change. And then the five chord is also two bars. And back to one. And then here's one bar on the one and the five chord. The last turn around. Now I'm doing 
doing a walk up starting from the five of one. Going right up that major scale and play just a little bit, right? Okay, so that is a good thing to, to, to know how to do. Just have your simple lined out bass line ready to go. Now, I like to play the one five one one pattern because um, it keeps things tight and clean and it keeps me out of trouble. So when I get to the five chord, if I was going from the last beat of the A chord to the first beat of the E chord, I'm gonna have the same note if I don't do that. I like that a little bit better, okay? Um, and that's kind of an ex an accepted way of doing things if you listen to enough um, kind of modern bluegrass you'll hear that pattern played a lot but anyway so one five one one on the two bar changes um, now if I want to mix that up just a little bit um, now by the way I can also play this I'm playing it in the lower register but maybe I want to play that from that a on the G string get there, whatever I want to get, you know, that's the way to do it. Okay, now, um, how can I mix that up and still keep the function of the bass, which is the timing that's really important, um, at the forefront, but still be a little creative within that? Um, what I want to do is, if I know my scales that I can pull from, uh, my fingerings will, will lead me to these different notes, all right? So I, we've already talked about the uh, A major scale. Um, another is the uh, Mixolydian mode, the A Mixolydian. Um, it sounds just like the major up to this point, and then you have a lowered seventh. Kind of where that's going to come from um, that, that seventh note the kind of what they call modal bluegrass sound you might get that and you also might just use it in a passing way as well to get to something else okay so good thing to have under your belt um, the pentatonic scale right you've heard that tune that that sound a lot in bluegrass. Um, so those are some of the things that, that we want to pull from. Um, now, the uh, the mantra, so to speak, um, for coming up with different stuff in a bass line is where I'm going, where am I going, and how am I going to get there? Where am I going, how am I getting there? So let's say I'm going to play that simplistic bass line, and then I'm going to Second time through, I'm going to mix it up and do some different stuff, okay? So here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the metronome. Always a good idea. So we'll start with a simple line just to get oriented. So what I did was a series of walk-ups and walk-downs from my target note. So my target note was D. I might have been going. 
And then I use sort of a mirror image. Back down. Okay, so where am I going and how am I getting there? I might also have decided to go and broke it up kind of like a walk, like a, like a triad. The one, three, and the five. Three, five, and then the four chord comes. I'm using, at that point, I'm doing something called enclosure. I'm trying to get to the D, but I went from the note below and then the note above within the scale. Called not, that's called diatonic when you're playing within the scale. Um, Non-diatonic notes are those outside of the scale. And sometimes you're going chromatically, meaning moving in half steps, like That's how I got there that time. All right, so that time I just kind of mirrored it with that kind of a move. So I had a whole step to start, like the scale, and then I went half steps, and then I just reversed that with a whole step coming down, and then half steps. All right, it sounds a little funky, but it works well because it, it's resolving where you need it to resolve, and it's going by pretty quickly, so you're not gonna sort of ruminate on that D flat. It's just gonna go by really quick. And if I wanted to get really crazy, I might play the third on, on beat one of the four chord. advise doing a whole lot of landing on an alternate note up from the uh, the root of the chord um, but it can happen sometimes and it might be the thing to do here and there um, but not all the time right so being creative is one thing being distracting is another um, so having said all that don't sleep on the one five one thing okay it, it does seem a little bit you know, tiresome maybe sometimes to have to do that all the time. But a lot of times that's exactly what you need to be doing. Um, you're there to support, you're there to outline the harmony for the rest of the band. Um, maybe once you know the situation you're in a little bit better and the people a little better, maybe then you start to, to step outside a little bit. But generally you wanna save things for at the point where there's a change happening, like you're going from one chord change to the next, or you're going from one section to the next, one phrase to the next, um, a chorus to a, to a break, um, kind of outline where you're gonna do stuff. So something like orchestrating is on a kind of micro level um, at different moments within the tune, all right? So those are some ways that we can get around within within a, a simple, I'm, remember, I'm keeping a two beat pulse going, boom, 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 boom. So my groove is gonna still be happening, but I'm using uh, some different ways of getting around within the changes. So think about that. Um, how are you going to get from point A to point B? Where am I going? How am I getting there? Trying to land on the root note of the next chord. Um, you could play an interesting game sometimes where you try to, Think about, well, I'm going to land on something else. How am I going to make that happen? Okay, so that's kind of an extreme example of that. But, you know, it's kind of interesting, but it's more of a, a game with yourself to see if you can do it. And then take parts of that and apply it in, in, in places, and you might come up with something really cool. Um, but again, you want to really give them the meat and potatoes as much as you possibly can until, um, you know, until everybody's more comfortable with, with your creativity um, and how you use it, okay? So cool to play different stuff, but default simple first. Um, make sure that you're playing in good time. Now, on the subject of time, 
I had some folks ask about how to practice that. Um, do I need to play right on the beat with the metronome? Do I need to try to pull ahead of the metronome? Do I need to fall behind it? What, how do I do this? So I would say that first off, um, not a whole lot of people can just play dead on with the metronome all the time perfectly. Um, so I think that's a good goal. That's a good goal to, to actually play what you're practicing in time perfectly all the time um, with the metronome. Once you can do that and you're, you're nailing it all the time, you can go into a recording studio and you know, nail it with a click track or whatever. Um, once you can do that really well, um, then maybe practice trying to push ahead just a little bit. Um, and that, that's a hard thing and it's kind of subjective, but the bass in bluegrass needs to kind of lean forward to give forward momentum a lot of the time. Because think about the way the instrument is in the mix. If it isn't real clear, sometimes it, it takes a little bit for it to, to reach the other folks, the sound. So you might want to push just a little bit so that it kind of compensates for that lag. There is a little bit of it because it takes longer for a bass note wave to form. Um, but if you're playing a little bit ahead, that's going to help that a little bit, right? You never want to drag. You never want to pull it back in bluegrass. Um, so don't drag. That, that's really a, the big no-no in bluegrass music that we want to stay away from as much as we possibly can. So um, working with the metronome, I like doing that thing where I just showed you where I'm playing it as an offbeat. Um, that gives you a chance to think about your note duration. Um, note duration is real important. It cleans up the groove if you can keep it to shorter notes. Um, it gets a little muddy and maybe can be perceived as draggy um, if you're playing your notes too long. Um, so keep them, keep them chippy and short and especially when you've got a standard bluegrass uh, ensemble with a, a mandolin chop going in there, okay? So not every band is gonna be the same. We're talking about just kind of mainstream, middle of the road, traditional style bluegrass here, okay? So you might get in a band that has a completely other aesthetic and wants longer notes more of the time, okay? So. You know, be, be able to do that. Now, sometimes you might play longer notes within a, a regular bluegrass setting, too. Maybe at a walk up or maybe there's a or walk down. Maybe there's a point where you're trying to make things a little more dramatic. So you want to change the, the note duration a little bit. And that might really uh, set something off and be a cool effect. But then pulling it right back. So... That's a little busy stuff right there. Um, so those, by the way, some of that rhythmic stuff is sometimes cool to do. Now, it's akin to slapping, um, but what I'm doing is oftentimes, if I'm playing something off of A and the D string like that, I might deaden the G string above it since my hand's already there. To give a little ba-bum, ba-bum here and there. Um, a little of that goes a long way. <laughs> so, so basically I'm gonna kind of bounce from the note above, the string above, the one I'm getting ready to, to head towards. So I'm wanting to play the D. Sometimes you can do it on the same string if you want. I play mostly with one finger unless I'm going to play a solo, then I'll come over with the two finger thing. Okay, so I'm trying to cram a bunch of stuff into a, a, a shortish amount of time. Um, uh, another of the questions that I got was um, about soloing. People want to know how to develop a, a bass solo. Um, bass solo is tough. Um, it's hard to execute. It's hard to play fast. Um, so, you know, you, you tend to rely on that good old bluegrass walking bass solo, which is cool. It works in a lot of situations. Um, but if you want to play something a little more melodic, um, akin to a jazz bass solo. So somebody asked about the differences between jazz and, and bluegrass. To me, it's um, a lot of it is within the, the solo um, 
melodic sort of content. Um, jazz bass solos are expected to, to take a, a melodic solo that moves around rhythmically and stuff. Um, bluegrass bass solos, not quite so much, but it's changing um, as more people with those kind of uh, backgrounds like myself and others uh, start to enter bluegrass music. You're going to see more and more of that. So basically, you really want to learn the tune, the melody of the tune that you're trying to play. Um, and learn it, and I'm going from, from the basics here, uh, learn it from the ground up. Make it as simple and square as you want it to be so that you just get the notes under your fingers on the instrument. So um, a little level like a flower, right? It goes from the five, oh, they, so five, one, to the C sharp, oh, they, tell. So that's a second inversion major triad from the five, five, one. Now, here it is here. Right? Now I can use my uh, pentatonic. I gotta use pentatonic. A, B. I'm sorry. E, F sharp, A, B. Now my my C sharp is there on the D string, and there on the G string for me. So they tell me just get a basic version of the melody together and then you can start to mess around with it so I'll try to play it kind of basic let's do it with a metronome one two three faster rhythmically, I myself pull my hands over like this, like a, an electric bass player, which is what I started out. I still play electric bass. I got a lot more facility that way, so if I want to do some advanced rhythmic stuff, it's easier for me to do. One, two, three. I'm sorry. Obviously, just some improvisation right there, but I'm using mostly the pentatonic mode or the pentatonic scale. with the major scale okay but I based it on a very simplistic rendering of the melody right so you can start there first and learn the melodies to all the tunes that you play um, and base your solos on that now they can get away from the melody after a little while um, but until you're really confident um, stay kind of within the, the the bumpers like if you're thinking about you know bumpers in, in a bowling alley for kiddos um, you know that's your melody um, roughly all right so you don't want to be throwing gutter balls like I did there a minute ago by just going for stuff so keep it um, keep it simple within within the melody now um, I'm trying to think there's some other stuff people wanted to know about um, soloing 
is a big one that I get asked about a lot. Um, practicing, um, practicing with a bow is a great idea. Getting your intonation together. So I got my tuner up here. So I might, to get my, my intonation going, I would practice slow scales. Watching the tuner. I'm going in and out so you can hear that and I'm adjusting. Okay, so I want to watch that tuner. Now you can put, clip it down on your bridge if you want to. Sometimes it rattles a bit so I, I kind of move it around. So if I clip it down on my bridge, I can be looking. So I want to keep it even. If there's a spot where I'm having a trouble, I'm going to run over that a couple times. Like for instance, going from five to... I want to practice different shifts. Get used to nailing the notes out of nowhere if I can. Um, Practicing slow scales in different keys, all the different keys you'd be expected to play in. Uh, a really good idea. Fifths, like droning. That helps you with your positioning. Like if you want to play in the key of B. Find where that stretch is. when you come to play you know you've got your position ready to go from practicing those droney fifths with the with the bow okay so that will help in some of those closed position keys um, and also just to open your bass up get the wood moving um, that's always a good thing to do if you've got time um, but uh, practicing slow scales with the bow is real uh, advantageous and definitely it's a good place to start and then get more intense as you as you practice as far as pick up the timing and the tempo and all that stuff as you go all right um, one quick thing uh, somebody asked about singing I'm gonna just touch on that because I do sing in the band and bass players are known for singing a lot of times um, at least parts it will help you get a job if you can sing parts that's for sure um, but you want to make sure that you have your timing together as you're singing right so on your levels like a flower you or any of these type tunes you know simplify your bass line that original default bass line I just played when that becomes muscle memory then your singing can be a little more free because you know we don't sing well they tell me your loves like a flower right we sing well, they tell me your love's like a flower. So we're all around the, the rhythm. We're not playing it straight on the beat. But if your bass is on the beat, it's easier to sing off the beat. Well, they tell me your love's like a flower. Sometimes in the springtime blossoms so fair. In the fall when it withers away, dear And they tell me that's the way of your love Okay, so if I keep that bass line simple, I can sing around it and not cause myself too much trouble, okay? Um, a lot of great singers in our music are bass players, so um, they go together because you don't have to do a whole lot on the bass to make it really work well, all right? Um, so... Keep it simple, keep it tight, keep it in tune. 
uh, practice with your metronome. Um, how, where am I going and how am I getting there? Always be thinking about that kind of stuff. Be orchestrating as you go. Should I play in the high register here? Should I bust it down to the low register? Um, whatever. How am I doing on the arrangement? Do I know what's coming next? All of that stuff. There's a lot to keep track of, but you know, main thing: don't go on autopilot <laughs> on the bass, and uh, and don't be afraid to play simply. It's cool. It works great in a lot of situations, and only start to mess around when you're nailing it in the simple uh, groove that you should be playing most of the time. Okay, so do the creative stuff after you are absolutely crushing the simple stuff. Great. Um, thank you guys, and. Uh, Thank you, IBMA, for asking me to do this. And thank you for everything you all do. Um, it's a strange year, and we appreciate your support out here in Bluegrass Land, and we're going to do everything we can to support you. So um, have a good one, and talk to you soon. Reach out to me. I'm easy to find if you, you want to go over any more of this stuff in uh, a little more detail and a little slower. Okay? Thanks a bunch.